A country music concert interrupted by gunfire. First confusion and then panic. Thousands of concert goers could only lie flat on the ground as a continuous stream of bullets rained down. On October 1, 2017, Stephen Paddock, a 64-year-old man from Mesquite, Nevada, opened fire on the crowd attending the Route 91 Harvest Music Festival on the Las Vegas Strip in Nevada. From his 32nd floor suites in the Mandalay Bay Hotel, he fired more than 1,000 bullets, killing 60 people and wounding 411 with the ensuing panic bringing the number of injured to 867. About an hour later, Paddock was found dead in his room from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. The incident is the deadliest mass shooting committed by an individual in United States history. It focused attention on firearms laws in the United States, particularly with regard to bump stocks, which Paddock used to fire shots in rapid succession, at a rate similar to that of automatic firearms. Bump stocks were banned by the U.S. Justice Department in December 2018. Paddock was born on April 9, 1953 in Clinton, Iowa. As the oldest of four sons of Benjamin Paddock and Dolores Hudson. Benjamin was a bank robber who was arrested in 1960 when Stephen was seven years old. Benjamin was later convicted and escaped prison in 1969, subsequently appearing on the FBI's Most Wanted list. According to Stephen's brother Eric, he was never with my mom, and Stephen had limited interaction with Benjamin following the latter's release from prison. According to one of Paddock's ex-wives in a police interview, he had spoken about how growing up with a single mother and the family's financial instability caused him to prioritize being self-reliant and self-sustaining. Paddock attended Richard E. Byrd Middle School and Sun Valley High School, graduated from John H. Francis Polytechnic High School in 1971, and graduated California State University, Northridge in 1977, with a degree in business administration. Paddock worked as a letter carrier for the U.S. Postal Service from 1975 to 1978. After that, he worked as an IRS agent until 1984. He was a defense contract audit agency auditor for one year, in 1985. Toward the end of the 1980s, Paddock worked for three years as an internal auditor for a company that later merged to form Lockheed Martin. He was known to have run a real estate business with his brother Eric. Paddock lived in the greater Los Angeles area and owned personal property in Panorama City, Cerritos, and North Hollywood from the 1970s to early 2000s. He also owned two apartment buildings in Hawthorne, California. In addition, he owned an apartment complex in Mesquite, Texas, which he sold in 2012. Relatives said Paddock was worth at least $2 million US dollars when he sold off the real estate business. Among his most profitable investments was an apartment complex purchased in 2004, which gave him more than $500,000 in annual income by 2011. IRS records show he made $5 to $6 million in profits from its sale in 2015. Paddock was an avid gambler, and although the extent to which he profited from it is not clear, his reported gambling winnings might have been substantial. He was sometimes seen in high-limit rooms, but he was not well known among high-stakes gamblers in Las Vegas and was not considered a high roller by the casinos. His game of choice was video poker, which he had played for over 25 years. He usually gambled after dark and slept during the day, he disliked being out in the sun. Paddock was married and divorced twice. He was first married from 1977 to 1979, and for the second time from 1985 to 1990, both marriages in Los Angeles County, California. Family members say he stayed on good terms with his ex-wives. Paddock lived in Texas and California, and then in a retirement community in Melbourne, Florida, from 2013 to 2015. In 2016, he moved from Florida to another retirement home in Mesquite, Nevada. According to property records, he bought a new house in Mesquite in January 2015, and sold his two-bedroom home in Melbourne. Paddock lived in Mesquite with his girlfriend whom he had met several years before in Reno, Nevada. According to neighbors, they also lived together in Reno. Many Mesquite residents recalled only seeing him around town, those familiar with Paddock described him as someone who did not speak much and kept a low profile. The local gun owner community never saw him at any of the gun clubs or shooting ranges, including makeshift ones in the nearby desert. An Australian acquaintance said he met Paddock in the United States and in the Philippines. He described Paddock as intelligent and methodical. In his account, Paddock said he had won money by applying algorithms to gambling on machines. Paddock was conversant in gun laws and in defending his view of the Second Amendment. 
the acquaintance considered Paddock a generous man whenever he and his girlfriend visited him. In 2010, Paddock applied for and received a United States passport. He went on 20 cruise ship voyages, visiting several foreign ports including ones in Spain, Italy, Greece, Jordan, and the United Arab Emirates. He was accompanied by his girlfriend on nine of them. They went to the Philippines together in 2013 and 2014. During the last year of his life, they traveled on a cruise to the Middle East. Paddock had his pilot's license since at least 2004 and owned two small planes. Paddock's only recorded interaction with law enforcement was a minor traffic citation years before the shooting, which he settled in court. According to court records, Paddock also sued the Cosmopolitan of Las Vegas in September 2012, saying he slipped and fell on an obstruction on the floor and was injured as a result. The lawsuit settled, and was dismissed with prejudice in October 2014. Paddock's brother Eric said that Stephen had no political or religious affiliations of any kind. Paddock's girlfriend, a Roman Catholic, said he was an atheist, who would blame her whenever she made the sign of the cross and something negative happened afterward. He did not talk about politics and did not belong to any political organizations. In addition, Paddock often complained of being sick and was sensitive to chemical smells. During his last months, Paddock reportedly often smelled of alcohol from early morning and appeared despondent. He was reported to have filled prescriptions for the anti-anxiety drug Valium in 2013, in 2016, and finally again in June 2017, the latter being four months before the shooting. The chief medical officer of the Las Vegas Recovery Center said the effects of the drug can be magnified by alcohol, as confirmed by Michael First, a clinical psychiatry professor at Columbia University. During an interview with local CBS affiliate Kloss TV, Clark County Sheriff Joe Lombardo said Paddock had reportedly been losing a significant amount of wealth since September 2015, which led to his having bouts of depression. According to his girlfriend, she noticed a decline of affection and intimacy towards her from Paddock, who had been romantic at first during their relationship, he attributed it to his declining health. Paddock's gun purchases spiked significantly between October 2016 and September 28, 2017. He purchased over 55 firearms, the majority of them rifles, according to Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives. He also purchased a number of firearm-related accessories. Prior to that, he purchased approximately 29 firearms between 1982 and September 2016, mainly handguns and shotguns. His girlfriend noticed the increase of firearm-related purchases but believed his interest in guns was just a hobby. At his suggestion, two weeks before the attack, his girlfriend went to her native country, the Philippines. Paddock bought her a surprise airline ticket and soon after wired her $100,000 to buy a house there. Most of their communication during this time was primarily through email and text message. He was spotted in Las Vegas with another woman, reported by investigators to be a sex worker. It was later confirmed that this woman was not an accomplice nor considered a suspect, and her name has not been released. Two days prior to the shooting, Paddock was recorded by a home surveillance system driving alone to an area for target practice located near his home. In a jailhouse interview with an unemployed chef, who claimed he had offered to sell Paddock schematics for automatic firearms, the chef said Paddock had spoken of anti-government conspiracies regarding FEMA and the Waco siege and Ruby Ridge standoff. In addition, the chef said Paddock had said that FEMA's actions after Hurricane Katrina were a dry run for law enforcement and military to start kicking down doors and, confiscating guns. The chef went on to say he thought Paddock was another internet nut, you know, watching too much of it and believing too much of it. According to his girlfriend, Paddock repeatedly cased out Las Vegas Village from different windows in their room when they stayed at the Mandalay Bay a month before the shooting. Paddock also may have considered attacking previous events. He had researched large-scale venues in cities such as Boston since at least May 2017, and had reserved a room overlooking the August 2017 Lollapalooza Festival in Chicago, but did not use it. From September 17, Paddock stayed at the Ogden in downtown Las Vegas, which overlooked the open-air Life is Beautiful festival that ran from September 22 to 24. Paddock's internet search terms from mid-September included SWAT weapons, ballistics chart 308, SWAT Las Vegas, and do police use explosives. Paddock arrived at Mandalay Bay on September 25, 2017, and booked into room 32135, a complimentary room on the 32nd floor. Four days later, he also checked into the directly connected room 32134. Both suites overlooked the site of the concert at Las Vegas Village. During his stay at Mandalay Bay, Paddock spent much of his time gambling, usually at night. He interacted with employees more than 10 times, including twice on the day of the shooting. An MGM Resorts International spokesperson said they were all normal in nature. 
cell phone records show that he also made multiple visits to his home in Mesquite. With frequent help from Hotel Bellman, he brought five suitcases to his room on September 25th, seven on the 26th, two on the 28th, six on the 30th, and two on October 1st. His arsenal of weapons, associated equipment and ammunition included 14 AR-15 rifles, some of which were equipped with bump stocks and 12 of which had 100 round magazines, eight AR-10 type rifles, a bolt action rifle, and a revolver. On September 30th, he placed do not disturb signs on the doors of both rooms. The mass shooting occurred between 10.05 PM and 10.15 PM on October 1, 2017, which was the third and final night of the festival. When the shooting began, country music singer Jason Aldean was giving the closing performance. Shortly before 10 p.m., hotel security guard Jesus Campos was sent to the 32nd floor to investigate an open door alert. He attempted to open a door that provided immediate access to the floor, but found that it would not open. After Campos entered the floor, he discovered an L-shaped bracket screwed into the door and door frame, which was responsible for barring the door from opening. After reporting the discovery to his dispatch center, he heard what he thought was the sound of rapid drilling coming from room 32-135 and went to investigate the matter. At approximately 10.05 p.m., he was hit in the right thigh by one of about 35 bullets that Paddock fired through the door of his suite. After Campos was hit, he took cover in the alcove between rooms 32-122 and 32-124 and immediately informed the hotel by radio and cell phone that he had been shot, though he believed he had been shot with a BB or pellet gun. At the same time, Maintenance worker Stephen Shuck was on the same floor to fix the door that Campos had reported as being barricaded. The already wounded Campos encountered Shuck and told him to take cover. Shuck contacted hotel dispatchers over his radio, informed them of the ongoing shooting, and told them to call the police. Neither the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department nor MGM Resorts International, the Mandalay Bay's owner, have confirmed when information about the initial shooting was relayed to the police. After Paddock used a hammer to break two of the windows in both of his suites, he began shooting through them at 10.05 p.m. He ultimately fired over 1,000 rifle rounds approximately 490 yards, 450 meters, into the festival audience. He initially started out with a few single gunshots before firing in bursts that usually ranged from 80 rounds to 100 rounds. Many people in the crowd initially mistook the gunfire for fireworks. During the shooting, a security fence hindered concertgoers from fleeing the 15-acre concrete lot. The gunfire continued, with some momentary pauses, over the span of 10 minutes and ended by 10.15 p.m. In addition to shooting at the concertgoers, Paddock fired eight bullets at a large jet fuel tank at McCarran International Airport 2,000 feet, 600 meters, away. Two of those bullets struck the exterior of the tank, with one bullet penetrating the tank. The fuel did not explode because jet fuel is mostly kerosene, which is unlikely to ignite when struck by a bullet. During the shooting, police officers were initially confused whether the shots were coming from the Mandalay Bay, the nearby Luxor Hotel, or the festival grounds. There were also multiple false reports of additional shooters at other hotels on the Strip. Officers eventually spotted multiple flashes of gunfire from the middle of the northern side of Mandalay Bay and responded to the hotel. At 10.12 p.m., Two officers on the 31st floor reported the sounds of gunfire on the floor above them. When officers arrived on the 32nd floor at 10.17 p.m. and encountered Campos a minute later, he directed them to Paddock's room and helped others evacuate. Campos was then directed to seek medical attention for himself. Between 10.26 p.m. and 10.30 p.m., eight additional officers arrived at the 32nd floor. Some of those officers manually breached through the door Paddock had screwed shut with the bracket. The gunfire had ceased and the police moved systematically down the hallway, searching and clearing each room, using a master key that was provided by Campos. At 10.55 p.m., the officers finished evacuating guests. At 11.20 p.m., police breached room 32-135 with explosives. Paddock was found dead on the floor from a self-inflicted gunshot wound to the head. Police then breached room 32-134, while entering the hotel suite, an officer accidentally fired a three-round burst from his weapon but the bullets did not hit anyone. At 11.27 p.m., officers announced over the police radio that a suspect was down. McCarran International Airport, adjacent to the shooting site, was shut down for several hours. Approximately 300 people entered the airport grounds as they fled from the shooting. This prompted officials to shut down all four runways. More than 25 flights were rerouted to ensure that no aircraft would be hit by gunfire while other flights were cancelled before airfield operations resumed at 12.40 a.m. on October 2nd. 
according to chronology of the events established by the authorities in the following days, the first two police officers reached the 32nd floor of the hotel at 10.17 p.m. A minute later, they were shown the location of Paddock's door. Between 10.26 and 10.30 p.m., an additional eight LVMPD officers joined them and began clearing other suites along the 32nd floor hallway. At 10.55 p.m., eight SWAT team members entered the 32nd floor through the second stairwell nearest to Paddock's suite. Once all the other rooms on the floor had been cleared, at 11.20 p.m., more than an hour after the first two officers arrived and 65 minutes after Paddock had ceased firing, the police breached his door with an explosive charge and entered the room. Paddock was found dead inside his suite from a self-inflicted gunshot to the head. In addition to the firearms and accessories found in Paddock's hotel room, there was a note that included handwritten calculations about where he needed to aim to maximize his accuracy. The note contained the actual distance to the target, his pinpoint own elevation, and the bullet trajectory relative to the line of fire. There were also a number of laptops in the suite, one of which was missing a hard drive. Computer forensics discovered hundreds of images of child pornography on the laptops. Ammonium nitrate, often used in improvised explosive devices, was found in the trunk of his car, along with 1,600 rounds of ammunition and 50 pounds, 23 kilograms of tannerite, a binary explosive used to make explosive targets for gun ranges. However, investigators clarified that while Paddock had nefarious intent with the material, he did not appear to have assembled an explosive device. An additional 19 firearms were found at his home. According to police, Paddock acted alone. His motive remains unknown. There has been some discussion around brain pathology initially thought to be benign as a possible contributor. Paddock's remains were sent to Stanford University to receive a more extensive analysis of his brain. The Stanford pathologist found no abnormalities present within the brain. Investigators believe that he was obsessed with cleanliness and possibly had bipolar disorder. Although a doctor did offer him antidepressants, he only accepted anxiety medication. It was reported that he was fearful of medication and often refused to take it. The doctor also described Paddock as odd and showing little emotion. Psychologists ex post facto have noted a distinct similarity between Paddock's demeanor and the psychological construct alexithymia, which might have modulated his decision to conduct the shooting given its association with various mass murderers throughout history. The Islamic State tried to claim responsibility for the shooting, and stated that Paddock had converted to Islam six months prior to the terrorist attack, but United States law enforcement officials have given no evidence of a connection between Paddock and IS. IS also identified Paddock as Abu Abdul Bar al Amriki. As of October 2020, there were 61 deaths, including that of Paddock. The immediate fatalities comprised 58 victims, 36 women and 22 men, all of whom died from gunshot wounds. The oldest was 67 and the youngest was 20. 34 were from California, 6 from Nevada, 4 from Canada, 2 from Alaska and Utah, and 1 each from Arizona, Colorado, Minnesota, Massachusetts, New Mexico, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Washington State, West Virginia, and Wisconsin. 31 of the victims were pronounced dead at the scene, while 27 succumbed to their wounds at the hospital, with the last of those dying on October 3, two days later. Paddock's suicide was the only death at the Mandalay Bay Hotel. A 57-year-old woman from California, who had been paralyzed in the shooting, died more than two years later on November 15, 2019. On August 24, 2020, the San Bernardino County Medical Examiner officially attributed her death to the shooting, though the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department, LVMPD, declined at the time to include her in the official death toll. The LVMPD also initially declined to include a 49-year-old Nevada woman who died from complications of a leg wound on May 26, 2020. The department revised its decision, however, and on October 1, 2020, included both women in the count. The incident was the deadliest mass shooting committed by an individual in the United States, exceeding the death toll of the 2016 Orlando nightclub shooting, in which 49 people lost their lives. On August 3, 2018, Clark County Sheriff Joe Lombardo held a press conference on the release of the LVMPD criminal investigative report of the October 1 mass casualty shooting. He said the 10-month investigation had revealed no evidence of conspiracy or a second gunman, and that the gunman's motive had not been definitely determined. Lombardo said what we have been able to answer are the questions of who, what, when, where and how. What we have not been able to definitively answer is why Stephen Paddock committed this act. A report published by the FBI's Behavioral Analysis Unit in January 2019 said that there was no single or clear motivating factor for the shooting. 
please subscribe to the channel so we can keep creating this type of videos. See you at the next one. Stay safe.